Aeroflot Flight 593 was a flight from Sheremetyevo International Airport in Moscow to Kaitak Airport in Hong Kong. The flight is in serious trouble. Gravity has become a deadly force as the crew fights to keep the plane from falling to Earth from 10,000 meters. Because of all the chaos, a 15-year-old is at the controls. It's a family outing, a proud pilot taking his kids on their first trip abroad. But in just a few minutes, their vacation will turn into a terrifying fight for their lives. Investigators would be amazed how did a 15-year-old kid end up in the pilot seat flying a brand new passenger aircraft. Quick reminder before starting the video, let us know in the comments below which air disasters to uncover next. And don't forget to leave your feedbacks. March the 22nd, 1994, Moscow. 15-year-old Eldar Kudrinsky is going abroad for the first time. But this is no ordinary kid. Eldar's father is Captain Jaroslav Kordinsky, an international airline pilot in Russia, which means membership of a privileged group and access to luxuries most of the country can only dream of. Aeroflot allows pilots' families to travel once a year at a discount, so Captain Kordinsky is taking his children on a four-day holiday to Hong Kong. Most of the 63 passengers are businessmen from Hong Kong and Taiwan looking for opportunities in the new Russia. Flight 593 takes off at 4.39 p.m. local time. Then it will join the Trans-Siberian Airway flying east towards Mongolia in China. It's a smooth flight. Only four hours into the 10-hour trip, they've just passed over Novosibirsk in Siberia almost halfway. Having negotiated the busy airways out of Moscow, First, Captain Danilov takes a rest break. He hands over control to relief Captain Kodrinsky, who now becomes acting captain for the next leg of the journey. Aeroflot's most technically advanced aircraft is now cruising on autopilot at 10,000 meters. It's a calm, windless night, but peace will not last. The pilots and crew will soon be fighting to save the lives of everyone on board. Flight 593 is now over 3,200 kilometers east of Moscow, near the middle of Siberia. Eldar and his sister surprise their father in the cockpit. Captain Kadrinsky letting 15-year-old Eldar to sit on the captain's seat. He's been waiting a long time for this moment. Eldar finds the control column quite stiff, so he tries harder, but he can't make the plane turn because the autopilot is keeping it on course. Suddenly, the column turns easily. His father switches the heading select knob back to its original setting, ending the turn and Eldar's illusion of flying the plane. Captain Kadrinsky then selects navigation mode. It tells the autopilot to put the plane back on course to Hong Kong. But Eldar is still holding the wheel to the left. It's become stiff again. Eldar now turns his control column slightly to the right, enjoying his time at the control wells. Eldar told his father that the plane is turning by itself. It's been just over three minutes since Eldar sat down in the pilot seat. The plane is tilting sharply, a turn that's getting steeper every second. The plane seems to be turning by itself, but no one seems to know why. The plane is flying at 650 kilometers an hour and banking hard like a quick turn in a sports car. The dramatic movement of the aircraft begins to push everyone into their seats. The A310's autopilot works to keep the plane aloft. Suddenly, the nose pitches up. The increased G-force makes it difficult for co-pilot Piskaryov to reach the controls. He does his best, but nothing happens. Piskaryov's hard turn to the left has had no effect on the plane. Eldar is the only one with both hands fully on the controls. He can only follow the most basic orders. He can't get up because the speed of the turn is pushing him back in his seat. Eldar has been in the pilot seat for just over four minutes, and now he can't leave. 
his body feels twice its normal weight. Kedrinsky can do nothing but struggle against the crippling G-forces. The aircraft is plunging towards the snowy earth, and there's nothing anyone can do. The plane dives at a frightening 40,000 feet per minute. In just seconds, the heavy pressure of the high-speed turn is replaced by near weightlessness. Meanwhile, co-pilot Piskaryov is still trying to gain control of the aircraft. Piskaryov has pulled the aircraft out of the dive, but it's climbing too quickly. The engines on the A310 don't have enough power to push it almost vertically into the sky. The airspeed drops dramatically. The plane strains to climb, but it's been pushed too far. As the force of the acceleration eases, Kadrinsky leaps into action. But Piskaryov has stalled the plane. The nose drops into a corkscrew dive. Now, the Airbus is twisting towards the ground from 6,000 meters and a breathtaking 70 meters a second. Kadrinsky pumps the rudder, the vertical surface on the tail, to help break out of the spin. At last, the plane seems to be responding. Working the rudder, Kadrinsky has nearly stopped the course crew dive. After a desperate struggle, the two pilots have managed to pull the plane out of its terrifying spin. They're starting to level out but it's still not completely in control. In all the chaos of the past few minutes, the pilots don't know exactly how far they've fallen. Suddenly, they run out of time. Less than two hours later, the first search party goes out to look for the Airbus in the frozen, rugged Siberian wilderness. They finally locate the remains of Flight 593 on a wooded hillside about 100 kilometers east of Novokuznetsk. It's soon clear there are no survivors among the 75 passengers and crew. The Russians take the victims' families to a morgue in a town near the crash site, where the recovered bodies are being held. Many are too badly mutilated to be identified. They ask the families to look at recovered items of clothing to help identify the bodies. The recovery operation gets underway. Everyone in the aviation world wants to know how a brand new, state-of-the-art Airbus could fall out of the sky without any warning. The Russian media has learned that Eldar was at the controls. Aeroflight, trying to improve on its Soviet-era image, wants to minimize the damage. The investigators are speechless. How could three experienced pilots allow children to fly a commercial airliner? They learn something even worse. The 15-year-old is only part of the problem. The plane's flight data recorder shows the two and a half minutes before the crash. While Eldar was at the controls, the autopilot partially disconnects. This is the start of all the plane's troubles, but how did that happen? The question that worries accident investigators is how did the autopilot become partially disconnected? There's no mention of it in the cockpit voice recording, if this is a fault with the aircraft, it could prove fatal to future flights. Accident investigators have finally discovered the terrifying sequence of events that made Aeroflight 593 fall to Earth. The 15-year-old flying the plane isn't the only reason they crashed. The discovery highlights an apparent flaw in how pilots are trained on the A310. Captain Kodrinsky's 15-year-old son had turned the plane's control column against the programmed flight settings. This disconnected the autopilot without warning from the ailerons, which turned the plane. The tragedy of one trip to Hong Kong may have contributed something to the safety of other passengers and crew. That wraps up the video. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up for the video. If you are not subscribed, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified about our uploads. I'll see you next week.